So before we begin, just a reminder that um, you know your body, your illnesses, your aches, your pains, your traumas, your injuries, I don't. Um, and so being that we're here on this uh, internet format, um, it's really imperative upon you to take good care of yourself. And if anything that I ask you to do causes pain in your body, then please don't do it. You know that it's pain when it's ripping, tearing, searing, oh my goodness, I'm hurting myself. Um, then very gently come out of whatever it is I'm asking you to do, take a few breaths, and if you feel it's appropriate, rejoin us. That being said, you may feel discomfort, you may feel irritation, you may feel aggravation. Um, those are just what they are. They're, they're um, experiences that you can sit with. Um, they are experiences that are not hurting you. They're actually, if you sit with them, teaching you resiliency, um, teaching you how to remain calm, remain centered, and remain focused in a moment that is uncomfortable. So just understanding that there is a difference between pain and discomfort. We do not wish to sit with pain. We wish to find an alleviation of that suffering. Um, through mindful means, but if it's just uncomfortable, then stay with that because she can be a pretty awesome teacher. All right, that being said, I am now going to go sit over by the chair. And I'm joined here today by Krishna Priya. Um, and she will be uh, showing you these practices on the yoga mat, and I'll be showing you these practices on the chair. So this is appropriate for everybody. Um, the only people that I suggest caution with would be those individuals who have had knee replacements or hip replacements. Um, and if you have had those, it doesn't mean you can't do this practice. It just means you need to move slowly and mindfully. Um, and anybody who is uh, currently with uncontrolled high blood pressure or some other serious medical condition, you might want to talk with your doctor um, before beginning any physical routines. You alone are responsible for the decision to be here today in this practice. Um, so again, as I said before, your health and well-being are incumbent upon you and your awareness. All right, so we're going to begin with the flexibilities. The Pawana Muktasana series. Pawana Muktasana means wind relieving postures and in yoga it is believed that excess wind in the body is actually quite destructive and it can contribute to stress and anxiety so this very simple process of postures is going to help us to reduce unnecessary wind in the body unnecessary air element and feel a little more grounded so to begin if you're sitting on the mat you're going to extend your legs out in front of you coming off of your prop sitting onto the floor and if your low back is very tight, making your knees bend, that you cannot straighten them, then you're gonna put a little prop underneath the back of your knees to support you. If you're sitting in a chair, you're going to just extend your feet forward. The knees can have a little bit of a bend in them. The toes are off the ground, but the heels are grounded. Sitting nice and tall with the spine erect, we're now going to begin to point and flex the feet. So pointing the toes, Maybe if you're sitting in the chair, taking them all the way to the ground and then flexing the feet. And going back and forth between these two movements. Now you can marry your breath with this movement also. So you would inhale as you point and exhale as you flex. Inhale as you point and exhale as you flex. Inhale as you point and exhale as you flex. Doing a few more of these, if you want to hold on to the edges of the chair for additional stability, you can certainly do so. Your chair should not be sliding or moving around on the floor, it should be quite stable. Okay, now point the toes, keep them pointed. Breathe in, breathe out, and then flex the feet. And now begin to squish the toes and then straighten the toes. Squish the toes, straighten the toes. Squish the toes, straighten the toes, and continue that practice. Very technical language there. So we're bending into the toes and then we're opening up the toes. Very good. Now release that and start to make rotations into the ankles. And so we're moving both feet in the same direction. The legs are very close together. The inner edge of the ball of the big toes are touching and your spine is still very straight. So there's no hunching and you are breathing. 
taking a few more rotations in this direction. And the next time you're at center, go the opposite way. So nice rotations in the opposite direction. You may find that there's a little bit of snap, crackle, pop going on in the ankles. That's just an indication that there is excess wind in those joints. And so right now you are working to alleviate that. You may or may not experience a reduction in that symptom. It's not necessarily harmful to you, but over time it can become a corrosive agent and corrosion of the bones particularly leading to early arthritic issues. All right, come back to center. So now you're gonna bend both knees and put both feet onto the ground if you're sitting in the chair. If you're sitting on the floor, you're gonna bend only your right knee and place your right foot onto the ground. Making sure again that you're sitting up nice and tall. Here, you're going to take both hands and put them around the right thigh. Lift the right heel off of the ground and then lift the foot off of the ground. And you're gonna to have to use your bicep strength here, especially if you're sitting in the chair to support your leg being lifted. Flex the foot. And now we're going to begin to extend the leg as we inhale and bend the knee as we exhale. Extend as we inhale and bend as we exhale. And go back and forth between those two movements, not rushing, taking your time. If you do this movement too quickly, then, and you're marrying the breath with the movement, then effectively you will be hyperventilating eventually, and we don't want that. So we just want a nice, slow, consistent, mindful movement. All right, now the next time that the leg is extended, hold the leg there, hold the leg there, hold the leg there. And now you're gonna bend that knee and place the ankle onto the left thigh. So now this is where knee replacement comes in a little tricky. If you've had a recent knee replacement and this is not the appropriate posture for you to be in because it causes pain in the knee, then please come back to the previous posture or just sit this one out. If you're comfortable being here and you don't feel that you're hurting yourself in any way, just make sure that that right ankle is very well supported onto the left thigh. Hold the right knee with the right hand, the right foot with the left hand, and begin a butterfly movement, moving the knee up and down. And you can do this fairly rapidly or slowly. It's completely up to you. Breathing in and breathing out. Do not hold your breath. Okay, now you can stop that movement, still holding on to the foot and the knee. We want to lift that foot up a little bit. And then we're going to begin rotations into the hip socket. So making circles, nice circles. And you'll just breathe according to the movement with this. And they can be very big circles or they can be smaller circles. It just depends on you. And this might not be an easy position for you to be in if you're not used to moving your leg like this. So just be patient with yourself. Give yourself an opportunity to get accustomed to the movement. Go the opposite way. Sometimes people get one way quite easily and then the other way is extremely awkward. So just honor your experience, whatever it is. Now bring that shin to center, and you're either going to feed both arms underneath of the shin so that the shin, the calf goes right into the crook of the elbows, or if this is too hard, you can just hold the shin with both hands. So whichever way you wish to do, it's either the lower leg is resting in the crook of the elbows, or you're holding that lower leg with both hands, and you're just here breathing. If the lower leg is in the crook of the elbows, you can take the palms of the hands together, into a prayer posture. Straighten the spine, keep the face soft with compassion, and breathe. And then to gently release out of this, we're gonna hold the foot, 
With the left hand, hold the knee with the right hand, place the ankle onto the thigh, and then we're going to uncross the legs, putting that right foot onto the floor, sitting nice and tall, and just noticing any differences between the right side of the lower body and the left side of the lower body. There might be a little bit of heat in that right side. That heat is called tapas, um, and it is an indication of circulation in the body. So you can be very grateful for the experience of that heat. It is reminding you that you are alive and vital and vibrant. Okay, so now we're gonna to come to the opposite side. I'm gonna take both hands, wrap them around that left thigh. You can clasp the fingers behind the left thigh, lift the heel off of the ground, make sure the spine is tall, and then lift the foot off of the ground, using the biceps to support you, strength of the upper arms. Flex that left foot, and as you breathe in, extend the leg, and as you breathe out, bend the knee. Breathe in, extend, breathe out, bend. Continue back and forth a few times. Isolating this movement to a single joint if possible. You may feel it from the hip down to the foot, but really we want to have the knee being the only joint that is moving here. Science and medicine tells us that the ability to isolate movement to a single joint is an indication of health. If you need four or five joints in order to bend your knee, that's not a very positive thing. All right, hold the leg straight. Sit up tall, be brave. You can do this. You've done much more difficult things on a day-to-day -day basis. Very good. And then bend the knee, placing that ankle onto the right thigh, making sure that the left ankle is directly on top of that right thigh. We don't wanna see that the ankle is sickled. In other words, there's no bend in the ankle. Um, a sideways bend, a concavity. Then keeping that foot slightly flexed, we're gonna take our right hand to the left foot and our left hand to the left knee and begin to move that knee up and down. Breathing in and breathing out. So important to keep the spine long here and not to hunch. And also very important to breathe, to make sure that you're not holding your breath. Okay. And then you can release the movement of that knee, holding the foot and the knee, lift the shin a little bit, adjust yourself as you need to so that you're safe and well aligned, and then begin rotations into that hip socket. So nice big circles or small petite circles, it's really up to you. Sometimes people like to start with a small circle and let it get gradually bigger. Again, it's up to you. And then reverse, go the opposite way. You do wanna feel this in the hip area. You wanna feel that this is really coming from the hip socket. All right, now bring the foot to center, the leg to center, and either putting the lower leg in the crook of the elbows with the palms and namaste, or holding onto the lower leg with both hands. And then just holding the foot there, slightly flexed, shin parallel to the floor if possible, or as close as possible to that as you can come. And then just breathing. And then if the eyes are closed, open the eyes, place the ankle down onto the thigh, and then support that foot coming back down to the ground, uncrossing the legs. Sitting nice and tall, both hands on the thighs, close the eyes again, and now just notice how the lower body feels. Maybe there's a little openness in the low back, a little bit of heat traveling down the outside edge of the left leg, circulation in the knee, 
The toes might feel warm. Or there could be 10,000 other things that you're experiencing. It's really dependent upon you, your body, and your practice. There's no right or wrong. We just want to be mindful that if there's pain, we're not creating more. We're alleviating it. Um, and that if there's discomfort, we're honoring it. Okay, so now we're going to come to the upper body. So I'm going to stay seated just as I am, but KP, Krishna Priya, is going to come to sitting on her heels. And now as she's sitting on her heels, she's going to decide, is she okay sitting on her heels, that there's no pain in the knees, no stretching happening in the knees, or does she need a prop? And if she needs a prop to sit on, she'll put it between her feet. You could put a bolster, a block, you could put a rolled up blanket or a couple of stacked towels. Um, just making sure that it's firm enough that it doesn't cause you to sink down uh, too much. And then the spine is nice and tall and the shoulders are stacked over the hips. The head is balanced between the shoulders. So do not sit in this diamond pose called Vajrasana unless your buttocks are supported, either by sitting on the heels or on a prop. If you just go back as if you're going to sit on the heels, but your butt doesn't touch the heels or the prop, then you could be hurting your knees. Very important to remember that. Okay. So now from here, we're going to extend our arms forward as high as the shoulders, no higher, no lower. And the fingertips are pointing straight forward. So this is neutral. Now we're going to exhale and bend the wrists. So the fingers are pointing down. And then inhale, extend the wrist so the fingertips are pointing up. Exhale, bend. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bend. Inhale, extend. And go back and forth a few more times. This is one of those postures where you want to isolate the movement as much as possible to the wrists. You do not want to be bending the elbows and straightening the elbows or moving the shoulders or bending the fingers. And really try to isolate this action. Come back to center and now start rotations, moving both hands in the same direction. And you'll find the lower arm will rotate a little bit with this action. That's perfectly normal. That is your radius bone doing its job. And then reverse direction, go the opposite way. Being very mindful, paying attention to how you're feeling, allowing the breath to become deeper, slower even, and then come to center. Now turn the palms up, bend the elbows so the fingertips touch the shoulder, keep the elbows in line with the shoulders, do not drop them down or lift them up higher. As you exhale, touch the elbows together as close as you can. And as you inhale, open the elbows out to the sides. As you exhale, draw the elbows close. And as you inhale, open the elbows out. Go back and forth between these two movements. Marrying the breath with the movement. And the reason why we exhale when the elbows come together is because as we exhale, there is less fullness in the body. So the activity, the action of drawing the elbows closer together becomes a little tiny bit easier. We inhale when we open the elbows out because it supports that external rotation. All right, next time that the elbows are touching now, we're gonna to start to make rotations into the shoulder sockets. So keeping the fingertips on the shoulders, make these really nice big rotations. Again, if it's more comfortable for you, the rotations can be smaller. Some people like to start with a little circle and then make the circle gradually larger. Either way is fine. Next time the elbows are at center, go the opposite way. If there is any kind of a shoulder injury or frozen shoulder syndrome where this is causing you pain, then please stop and sit quietly until the next process. All 
Okay, next time the elbows are out to the sides, leave them there. The elbows are in line with the shoulders. And now we're gonna extend the arms out to the sides as well, and then turn the palms down. Keeping the elbows in line with the shoulders, bend the elbows and let the forearms dangle like pendulums on a clock. This is relaxing the elbow joint. Breathing in and breathing out. Try not to take any tension into the neck, throat, or face. Keep the face soft with compassion. And then place the hands down onto the lap. Close the eyes. Feel the heat across the upper body. Recognize that as circulation of blood and lymph and interstitial fluids, as tapas, as the, the heat of being alive, the patience of experience, and the practice of presence. And then gently flutter the eyes open. Now extend the arms out forward one more time. And now we're gonna work with the fingers. So you're gonna make a fist with the thumb in, then extend the fingers and make a fist with the thumb out. Little gentle squeeze, not too much. Go back and forth between these two movements. Fist with the thumb in, and fist with the thumb out. Do one more of each. And then rest the hands down. And now we'll be coming to our uh, neck rotations. So we don't like to take the neck in this huge circular movement that we oftentimes see in um, exercise classes. We want to do this in a slow, mindful way. So we're gonna exhale, lower the chin toward the chest. Inhale, lift the face to center. Exhale, lower the left ear toward the left shoulder. Inhale, the face to center. Exhale, lower the right ear toward the right shoulder. Inhale, the face to center. Exhale, lower chin to chest. Inhale, face to center. Exhale, left ear toward left shoulder. Inhale, the face to center. Exhale, right ear toward right shoulder. Inhale, the face to center. Now turn the face and look past the left shoulder. Inhale, the face to center. Exhale, turn the face to the right shoulder. Inhale, the face to center. Exhale, turn the face toward the left shoulder. Inhale, the face to center. And exhale, turn the face toward the right shoulder. Inhale, the face to center. Now, if you have glasses on, please take them off. And sitting nice and tall, we're going to do eye movements now. Today, we'll keep our eyes open. And we're not going to move the head or the shoulders or the neck. We're only gonna move the eyes. So keeping the face straight forward, head balanced between the shoulders, rolling the eyes down, and up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Down to the left, up to the right. Down left, up right. Down left, up right. Down left, up right. Down left, up right, down right, up left, down right, up left, down right, up left, down right, up left, down right, up left. Now make big circles. Do not move your head. Just take your eyeballs in big circles. This can be irritating, but it's not hurting you. It's just irritating because most of us don't do this on a regular basis. Go the opposite direction. And then close the eyes now. Rub the palms of the hands together until you feel heat building up in the palms of the hands. And then cup the eyes with the hands 
and open the eyes. Do not press into the eyes. Let the eyes absorb the heat in the palms of the hands. And then closing the eyes, rub the palms of the hands together again. Once you feel heat building up in the palms of the hands, then cup the eyes, open the eyes, and let the eyes absorb the heat from the palms of the hands. Closing the eyes, doing this one more time, rubbing the palms of the hands together, keeping the face soft with compassion. Once heat has built up in the palms of the hands, cup the eyes, open the eyes, and let the eyes absorb the heat. And then release the hands down. Sit nice and tall, close the eyes, and just scan the body from head to toe, noticing how you feel. With each breath in, you are receiving the gift of life, the gift of experience, the gift of witnessing. And with each breath out, you are expressing gratitude for those gifts. The practice of compassion, place the right hand on the heart, left hand on the belly. Feel your body breathing. Know that the breath is evidence of the divinity, the divine source breathing into you. And that your breath out is acknowledging that gift, that connection. And now releasing the hands down, fluttering the eyes open. We will now come into Shavasana. So if you're sitting in the chair, you can stay in the chair. Or if you would like to lay on the ground, you can do that. Krishna Priya will lay on her mat. If you have low back pain and you are lying on the ground, you can place a rolled up blanket or a bolster underneath the back of the knees. That will put a little bit of a bend in the knees in a healthy way that will help to alleviate tightness in the low back. If you have uncontrolled high blood pressure or recent heart attack or something within the head like a recent TBI, traumatic brain injury or glaucoma, then you might want to prop yourself up a little bit so that your upper body is on more of an angle. If you're chilly, you can cover yourself with a blanket. Sometimes it's nice to put a blanket over your lap if you're sitting in a chair for additional grounding and warmth. And then if you have glasses on, you'll take them off. Making any last adjustments as we come into Shavasana, relaxation. The eyes are closed, feel that the eyes are sinking back into the head and that the body is sinking into the earth. And we'll begin systematic relaxation of the body, relaxing the toes, soles of the feet, heels, tops of the feet, Relax the ankles, relax the calves, the shins, the knees, the kneecaps. Relax the thighs front and back. Relax the hips, the buttocks, the pelvis, the groin. Relax the low back and the low abdomen. Relax the mid back and the upper abdomen. Relax the upper back and the chest. Relax the shoulders, armpits, upper arms. Relax the elbows and lower arms. Relax the wrists, back of the hands, heels of the hands, palms of the hands. Relax the fingers. Relax the neck and throat. Relax the jaw. Relax the face. Relax the scalp. Relax the entire body from head to toe. With each exhalation, become three times more relaxed. With each exhalation, become three times more relaxed. Feel that any remaining stress or tension is melting away from you, being absorbed by the earth beneath you. Feel that the breath is deep, very deep and very comforting. Feel in this moment that you are at complete peace, with complete contentment. You are completely okay.
Now very gently begin to deepen the breath, a more physical breath. Know that you're breathing. Begin to wiggle the toes, move the fingers, and turn the head gently from side to side. If you're lying on the ground, you can roll over onto your side and curl up into a ball. If you're sitting in the chair, you can simply stay where you are. Take this moment to once again fill the heart with gratitude. Feel the power of appreciation, the power of reverence, the gift of life. Now bring yourself to a seated posture if you're on the floor. And we'll sit nice and tall. Sitting on a prop so the hips are slightly elevated, so the low back is supported. And from here, we'll draw the hands together in front of the heart. And we'll join our voices in one uplifting ohm. Take a nice breath in. Oh. I'm bowing the head to the heart, acknowledging all that is. Beloved mother, beloved father, beloved divinity, please protect us. Wrap your arms around us. Shower us with your love and your grace. Keep us safe. Allow us to understand and accept our current condition in the physical world. Allow us to feel compassion for those who are suffering, appreciative joy for those who are happy, indifference to those who are wrong, and allow us to know that you are with us always drawing the face to center, releasing the hands down. I thank you all so much for joining us today for this practice, a gentle practice that can be done either on the floor or in a chair. And that can be done by almost any individual, even individuals who are in bed and can't get out of bed can do this practice. They just have to do it with modifications. Because this was a shorter practice, the Shavasana was shorter than it typically would be. Shavasana, the relaxation at the end of class, in most instances should be a minimum of five minutes. Relaxation is a complete restoration of the nervous system, bringing it to a state of, of parasympathetic activity rather than a state of fight or flight. So with that, I'm going to come over by the computer and ask if anybody has any questions. I see that we have one comment in the chat room. Thank you so much. You're so welcome, Marguerite. So, so welcome to see you this morning. Wonderful, wonderful to see you. Any questions from anybody? All right, wonderful. Thank you all so much. Have a blessed and amazing day. Namaste.